The objective of this video is to show you how to design a buffer solution. This equation here is very important when designing a buffer solution. It reads pH equals the pKa plus the log of the quantity molar concentration of the conjugate base. It's the conjugate base divided by the molar concentration of the weak acid. And this is the same conjugate base weak acid that we talked about in the previous video. These are the components of <clears throat> a buffer. The other thing you want to keep in mind is to choose a weak acid with a pKa close to that of the desired pH of your buffer. And the other is to make the concentrations of the weak acid and the conjugate base identical. Make them at least 0.1 molar each. So we have three things. The equation, which is generally called the buffer equation, choosing a weak acid with a pKa close to the desired pH, and then making sure that the concentrations of both the conjugate base and weak acid are approximately the same and are at least 0.1 molar each. So I'll show you an example now. Here's a problem. Design a buffer that has a pH of approximately 4.7. Well, one of the criteria mentioned before was to select a weak acid that has a pKa close to the pH of what your buffer should be. Well, one might ask, how do I know? How do you go about doing this? Well, you need to look up weak acids at a table and find their corresponding pKa's. Now, it just so happens that acetic acid has a pKa of 4.75. How did I know that? I looked up at a table, and there's a handy short table in your book that you could use that could help. So this is close enough to our desired pH that we're going to use the acetic acid buffer, acetic acid acetate buffer. And the other criteria said to make sure that the concentrations, the molar concentrations of conjugate baits and the weak acid are the same and at least 0.1 molar. It's up to you to choose the concentration. If you choose 0.1 molar for both, that'll be fine. But pick a number. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, pick any number you want. Okay, let's just pick 0.3. Let's pick 0.3 molar for each. 0 0.30 molar for each. What I'm trying to get to here is a little bit of math. So let's calculate what the pH is going to be. pH is the pKa, which is 4.75 plus the log, the molar concentrations of the A- minus and the HA in that fraction. Well, if they're both 0.3, what happens to this fraction? Fraction becomes 1. If you take the log of 1, you're going to find out that it is, and I suggest you do that right now. Take about 10 seconds and take the log of the number 1. And you found out that the log of 1, at least to the base 10, is 0. So it works out, therefore, that the pH equals the pKa, which is equal to 4.75. This is why we like to choose a buffer, excuse me, we like to choose an acid that has a pKa close to the pH of the buffer so that this fraction works its way down to zero. The reason why we like to choose equal concentrations of conjugate acid and base is for the idea of buffer action. So 
we have equal amounts of weak acid and weak base to help counter if a acid or base is added to the system. We have equal strengths of both sides, so to speak. Now I'd like for you to try a buffer problem. So design a buffer that has a pH of approximately 9.9. .9. There's your buffer equation. I suggest you look in your book at the table where you have a list of acids, weak acids, and the corresponding pKa's. Start there. Come back in a minute and check your answer. Well, I chose phenol because phenol has a pKa of 9.89 pretty close to 9.9. .9. I chose concentrations of 0.2 molar. So when I plug those numbers into the equation, you get 9.89 plus the log of 0.2 over 0.2. This fraction reduces itself down to 1. And the log of 1, as we found out before, is 0. So that pretty much eliminates that term there. So you're left with pH equals 9.89.